What is up, everyone? What is up? Welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're playing The Elementalist 2 from Pixelberry. Or, I mean, Choices. You know what I mean. Uh, in the last chapter, we're introduced to our villain, the Top Hat Guy. Until we found out his real name, we're calling him Top Hat Guy. Um, yeah. And that woman, that's the girl that was, that's in the tower. That's what our Dean Goeth wanted to find, wanted us to look for. I uh, hope we find her and find out what her name is. Hope it doesn't, I, I feel like there's a twist to this. I feel like it. Anyway, let's begin the story. It's the first day of class. What surprises await? Should I be starting class? We need to find a mystery. We have a mystery to solve. Literally. And the sky's orange. Why is the sky orange? Well, yeah. Let it go. Let, let it go. Let it go. Chapter 2. In session. Starting class now. Ugh. In History of Spells, the following morning, you and Beckett discussed the strange man who appeared in Penn Square yesterday. Okay, first of all... Never mind. Oster ballistically said his, powers were off the, his, power, his power was off the charts. Were our parents friends, friends with a lot of powerful attuned, or what? He seemed more interested in making your acquaintance than remnant reminiscing about your parents. Perhaps he heard or that you vanquished Ripefay. But Atlas helped with that, and this guy totally ignored him. He's he's been pretty grumpy about it about it. Doesn't trust him at all. I can't stop thinking about how in my vision and he said he was happy to be back. But why did he go away in the first place? What about you? Do you feel ready to face him again? Whenever the inevitable opinion occurs. Honestly, I don't know if I can be ready. This guy seems way too unpredictable. But I do know that. But I do know that. Oh yeah, he's. Penn Square was chaos. Someone could could get seriously hurt the next time around. Though he seems to listen to you. If you tell him to be careful with his magic, he may just comply again. Thanks. That's a big if. I don't want to risk putting people in danger. And and then there's that weird thing my power did w did when I was trying to get his attention. Good morning, class, and welcome to History of Spells. Who's this? A young woman passes swiftly on her way in front of the class. Beckett's jaw drops and he whispers to himself, No, it can't be. I have something fun planned for today. I dare say, by the time you leave, you'll be wishing it wasn't over. Ah, yes. I should introduce myself first. Class, my name is Professor Harrington. Professor Harrington? It's Katrina. 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 Where have I heard that? Wait a minute. What? Did, have I seen her before? I don't know. Murder breaks out and several students nearby turn to look at Beckett. He glares at them. I see the family name still holds its glory. Don't worry. I won't Play favorites. My brother will have to work as hard as the rest of you. Wait, wait, brother? Beckett's eyebrows knit like he's trying to solve a complex inquisition. You tune back in as his sister begins explaining the lesson holding up a mishappen piece of metal. The weapon forging spell though, can be traced back to the Knights of the Round Table. It was first used to create Excalibur. Knights of the Round Table? Excalibur? A weapon forging spell? Beckett, your sister's awesome. 
This spell is a combination metal fire spell with predominant energies in in the realm of metal. The first step is to focus. I should write this down. Fo focus your Our magic in to forge into a forge while keeping there's heating it to extreme temperatures while keeping it controlled. Controlled, and once that's done. It's a matter of melding, shaping, and resolifying the metal, metal into the shape you desire. Meld, melding, melding, shaping, If I no, into the shape I desire. Wow. The metal in her hands, which has which she's been melding and performing as she speaks, she has, has become a long sword with a gleaming jewel in, in its hilt. Huh. Ooh, that's nice. Incredible. Katrina floats a hunk of metal onto each student's desk and tells you to begin. You turn Becketh eagerly. Your sister just forged a, a freaking sword. That's epic. <laughs> we already have a sword. Dude, I've never wanted to impress a teacher so much in my life. Slow down, Anthony. All second year spells are dual element. It won't be a simple matter to... So I just have to make a forge, huh? Your fire magic comes to you with ease, heating your extreme temperatures between your palms. The air around it shimmers with heat. Okay, uh, keep it control. Keep it controlled. With a dis disciplined hand, you concentrate, concentrate the heat between your palms. The flames turn to a searing blue. Easy peasy. Fantastic technique over there, Mr. Williams. I might even call you a natural. Thanks, Professor. I guess today's a good day for fire magic. Besides you, Beckett speaks dryly, flames roiling between his palms. There's a reason we learned the, learned the flame spell. Well, our first day at f as freshman, you know. I'm complexity. The complexity comes into play when adding metal to the mix. With a wave of his hand, and he adds his block of metal to the flame. He twists his wrist, his wrist, and the metal starts glowing. He slowly shapes it into a long, thin rapier. And when he gets the flames extinguished, you you see the pentagast crest carved carved into its hilt. With a better understanding of the alloys used, I could have produced a more superior result. But I dare say, this will suffice. Wow, that's so fancy. I wonder what I can do. 
Your metal magic practically leaps to your biting. You direct your chunk of metal into the flames where you instantly sense it turn soft and malleable. Energy thrums through you, leaving you giddy. You feel like you could forge the mightiest weapon or the most incritic in dagger. Hmm. A forge it into a sinister club, a double-edged sword, or a beautiful dagger. I don't want a dagger or a club. Swords are the most common weapon to anything. Even in anime, the sword is always the main weapon. Double-edged sword. Excalibur is about to have some competition. You make, you make long, sweeping motions with your hands, and the metal thins and lightens your flames, lick up its sides, helping you sharpen both edges. You press your palms together, and the blade pulses white hot before cooling to a silver so gleaming you can see your reflection in it. My goodness, that's positively passable, though should I be concerned about your knack for forging weapons? Sometimes a guy just wants a cool knife. My magic is on fire today. I would sure say so. Class, please look at these two stellar examples of the forging spell. What a lovely craftsmanship, Anthony. And a fantastic touch with the Pentagast crest, Mr. Harrington. I have a feeling you two will be a pleasure to have in class. As she breezes away, you notice Beckett frowning at her back. Is everything okay? It seems like she's going to be a pretty fun professor, don't you think? That, reminds, that remains to be seen. You can now use the weapon forging spell. As the classroom em empties later, Katrina approaches you and Beckett in the hall, radiating with joy. She pulls Beckett into a tight hug. Surprise! I didn't want to give it away, but it was so hard to keep this from you all summer. Katrina, I... Why did you... Katrina releases him, then holds out a hand toward you. When you take it, you're surprised by her firm handshake. And you're Anthony. I've heard so much about you. It seems you really helped help my brother come out of his shell last year. I say it's good. it's been good for him. He seems so much more lively. Katrina, please... If you're going to talk to Anthony's, if you're going to talk, if you're going to talk Anthony's ear off, could you at least wait until I'm not present? I'd rather avoid the headache. You see, I should insist that you call me Professor Harrington, but I'll make an exception outside of class. That was a great lesson. Thank you. I'll admit I was nervous. About Nervous, but when I was trying to think of a lesson plan, I asked myself, what do college students find interesting? Not that I'm complaining, but that made you settle on weapons? Well, Bacchus did spend half the summer lamenting that he was missing Professor Ingold's symmetry on ancient weaponry spells. Not to brag, but he's, but he, he's rather brilliant. It makes Big Sister proud, witnessing his achievements in person. Beckett pinches the bridge of his nose. Katrina, how long exactly have you known? Have you known you'd be teaching here? Months. I asked. I asked mother and father to keep to please keep a bit under wraps because we both know that their bragging can get rather tiring. Heaven knows they don't need another thing to brag about not when it comes to you. Oh, Anthony, I meant to mention this earlier, but I adore your fashion sense. Dressing in black the first day of the term was all the rage when when I was an undergrad. It was it's a shame that a few people follow tradition anymore. Thanks, I do what I can to stand out. 
Now, if I remember correctly, the dining hall is this way. Come, we must have lunch together. She links one arm with Beckett and the other with you, then steers you both across campus, chattering all the way, all the while. In the dining hall, Katrina makes a beeline for your friends. She takes a seat and greets one of them one by one. Good morning, Atlas, Griffin, Shreya, Aster, and Zeph. It's, it's a treat to meet you all at last. I'm Katrina Harrington. The Katrina Harrington? Tell me I'm not hallucinating. And that, that coat is real Burberry? How do you know who we are? I like to keep my identity and location under wraps. Beckett's, Beckett's spoken all about you, the jockish upperclassman in The Walking in, in the Post, the second-rate comedian, the attuned superfan, and Anthony's socially intept, severe-looking twin. He sure seems to have done a certain job of describing each of us. While Katrina starts chatting with your friends, you take a seat beside Beckett, whose jaw is clenched. You whisper to him, Hey, everything okay? You must be kind of shocked about all this. Oh, I'm just doing peachy. I'm just... Oh, I'm doing just peachy. Katrina's already inserting herself into my social circle. What more could I ask for? If you're that much of a thief fan, Katrina, you should check out the school games. The team's been doing really well. I didn't make the team in my day, but didn't have time to fit it in with my other extra cure, extra cure, yeah. A shame there aren't 30 hours a day. Katrina, the teacher conference room is down the hall. I believe you're supposed to eat with your, eat with your peers. A letter flutters down onto the table in front of you. You all stare at it for a moment. Is this for me? Anthony, be careful. Actually, give it to me. I'll destroy it. What? No way. Nothing's Nothing dangerous would get through the words. You gotta open it. Have we forgotten that plenty of dangerous things have gotten through the words? words? I, gu I agree with your brother, Anthony. How about I give it a scan? I could check if it's... I could check it for dangerous hexes, jinxes, toxins, and, nefar and other nefarious substances and spells. This is no small matter. Oh, it's nothing. Allow me. She waves a hand slowly over the letter. It glows a faint blue, then fades back into its regular color. Nothing suspicious on my end. Maybe you have a secret admirer, Anthony. I have someone. If you don't mind. Only one way to find out. You zip your thumb beneath the seal. When the letter springs open in your hands, you begin to read a florist script aloud. Dearest Anthony, my sincerest apologies for the mess I created yesterday. I behave like an ruffian. I'm utterly embarrassed. Putting that between us, making your acquaintance was true was a true pleasure. I'm certain you could teach me a thing or two about magic. Until the fabled day we meet again, I send wishes for health and magical plenty your way. Do take care. All, all my best. He who slumbers no longer, Cain of the of earth and sky and all that lies beneath. It's, is it from the top half guy? Top hat guy? As your voice fades, you feel a strange shiver race through you, as if an unfamiliar energy has settled down over you. You set the letter down. He certainly seems a lot friendlier on paper than than in person, and he apologized for yesterday. I don't know. My father's always told me never trust someone with a handlebar mustache. I don't know who this who this Kane guy his who this Kane is, but oh, his name is Kane. Kane. Hmm. I don't trust him yet. Finally, your talking sense. He went from d totally destroying Penn Square yesterday to acting all sorry about it yesterday. Today, like I'll be fooled that easily. He told—he's totally kissing your butt. But you need to keep your guard up. That note reminds me of me of Duke Spelling, Spellier's son, Lucas Spelly Spellier. 
the third. He had such an eloquent way of speaking. He instantly took a liking to me. Though, if I recall, he and Beckett absolutely despise each other. There was one time that Beckett stands up abruptly from the table and you all turn to look at him. He clears his throat. <clears throat> I have to get to my next class. Before you can react, he turns and strides toward the door. You glance at his plate, which is still half full of food. But you haven't finished eating, you, you don't, and you don't even have a class after this. You stand it up and hurry out, after, hurry out of the dining hall after Beckett. You find him just outside pacing agitatedly. Is everything okay? You left in a pretty big hurry, and you barely ate your lunch. I can't believe Katrina just showed up and inserted herself into my life once again. She always, she's always biting in, in, in as soon as I carve a place for myself. He takes a deep breath and turns to you. Pardon my outbursts. You don't need to trouble yourself with my grousing. It's a trivial matter. Uh, no, you're not getting away. Oh, no, you're not getting away with that. You're upset, and I want to know what's wrong. You don't have to bottle it up. Beckett sighs, rubbing his temples. I'm aware I sound foolish and paranoid, but it's just Katrina. Just shines at everything she does. She always has, and I've always paled in comparison. How am I supposed to amount to anything at this school when my accomplished older sister has returned to steal the spotlight? So that's what this is about. I have no idea what's going on. I'm going to take a walk practice in the air spell I've been developing. It allows one to reshape the clouds. Excellent for clearing the head. So now the industrial Beckett Harrington can manipulate the actual clouds in the sky? No biggie. It's half hardly difficult. You're welcome to come with me if you're so inclined. I would appreciate the company. Clear your head. I'm finishing my lunch. I kind of just rushed out out to make sure you were all right, but I should probably get back before if my food gets cold. Right. I wouldn't want you to starve. I hope your walk goes well. Back as gives you a non-communical grunt and heads down the hall. You return to the dining hall to finish your lunch. Later on, you, Atlas... You and Atlas meet Dean Swan for the first paired lesson. You show her the letter before training begins. It's just a, It just appeared out of thin air. I didn't think something like that would be possible, given campus security. No, it shouldn't be. And you really don't, and you really don't know this Kane person? Our parents didn't know him. Your parents may have, but there's no way to know for sure. However, I certainly don't. Are you sure? Are you sure you don't? Are you sure you aren't keeping anything, keeping something from us? You know, again, like you kept secrets from us last time. I promise you, Anthony Atlas, no more secrets going forward. Anything that I know, you'll know. From what I've des what you described, I'm certain I remember him. Well, there goes our only lead. Not necessarily. Anthony, I'm sure you practiced your precons quite quite a bit over the summer. That's bound to help. I might be a little rusty, but it's worth a try. Close your eyes, letting the room's warmth seep into your skin. You try to ignore the feeling of Dean Swan and Atlas's eyes on you. Ephora, Foria, something begins to swirl in front of your eyes, a pulsing thing, mass of colors begin to take a shape. Come on, come on. This has this has got to work. It has to. A young girl with golden blonde hair kneels on the floor with a dip, dilapidated building, scraping a knife, a dull knife across the rune symbol painted on the hardwood floor. Please, please, please. She scrapes the last bit of paint before dropping the knife. Here we go. She runs for the door, hand outstretched. 
and meets a shimmering magic barrier. The impact sends her flying backward across the room. No. No. You fling your arms out wide as you come back to yourself. Ethy, what is it? What's Kane up to? It wasn't Kane. It was that girl from the locket. She's trapped in some kind of house. She's all alone, Atlas. That's not our responsibility. After everything with Rife, I'm not feeling up for another mission already. We need to rescue her. Speaking of, we haven't had much of a chance to catch up yet, and I've been meaning to ask, how are the two of you feeling? I can imagine what must be going through your minds. It's just you, Anthony. Atlas told me that you were the one to deliver the final blow to Rife. That must still weigh on your conscience. Going forward, some of the decisions you will make will sway your moral compass. Choose wisely. Actually, it's been really hard. I can't stop seeing his face when I'm asleep. When I'm, when I'm awake, I know he was a monster, but I can't help wondering if killing him has made me one, too. Never. You did what you had to do. Don't you ever put yourself in the same category as that, that jerk. Atlas is right. The simple fact that you have these feelings means you could never be anything like Rayfei. I'm sorry that I couldn't have done more to stop Rayfei myself, but that's why I'm going to do everything in my power to help you two reach for your full potential and or die trying. Though not literally, oh dear, perhaps I should be more careful with my ch word choice. She claps her hand. Our first lesson is, is a technique to help you expand your magical capacity, allowing you to power stronger spells on your own. Does that mean we'll get more attunements? Because I'm more than ready to become the Avatar. The what now? The last airbender? Of course. Not exactly. This, is, th this technique is more about strengthening what's already there. Like a swimmer drown or growing, or growing their lung capacity with cardio training. The trick is learning to find the edges of your magical energy and then stretching them to their limits. Like getting a fitted sheet onto a mattress. Are we the mattress or the sheet in this analogy? Both. I'll try first. It must be the summer solstice or tr something. Because my magic is feeling crazy strong today. This will be easy. Well, it isn't the summer solstice and you shouldn't get ahead of yourself. You'll need to calm your magic to mine your magical energy. You flash Dean Swan a thumbs up, then close your eyes. After a moment or two... A focusing, you find the core of your magical energy. Got it. Now what? Now what do I do again? Use the sheet analogy. Grasp the edges and stretch them to expand your magical core. You funnel your consciousness into the glowing beacon of your magical core. Though it's bright, you notice it seems small. This isn't my first time making a bed. You grasp, you grasp the edges with your mind, but the second you tug, your energy loses consistent like a fog. What the? Your consciousness grapples with a faint sensation of your energy. You manage to get a little slippery hold on to on it. Come on, you can do this, Anthony. Hmm. You dig deeper, screwing your screwing your eyes shut and trying to cultivate the tiny seed of your magical core. Anthony, don't push yourself too hard. I just need to... A few minutes later, you open your eyes, the glare of the sun igniting a throbbing in your head. You sit up and your surrounding you swim into focus. What happened? I feel kind of sick. I told you not to push yourself. You fainted right on the mar onto the marble. 
It's like my van my magical hole just vanished. Dean Swan, what's going on? That's impossible. You you're just doing it wrong. Watch me. Atlas eyes eyelids flutter shut and his breathing becomes gentle. I can feel it. It's right there. His shoulders tense and his nose wrinkle as he strains to perform the spell. Suddenly his eyes fly open. It's gone. I don't feel my magical energy at all. He holds up his hand and snaps his fingers together, trying to conjure a flame, but only sparks appear. Now, now, don't panic. Atlas, perhaps your magic is experiencing a lull because of the daytime. That's never happened before. And Anthony's a sun at. He shouldn't be having any problems. There has to be an explanation. Like when my magic got all weak last year, it was because of the winter sol your solstice. You're very right, Anthony. A calm, collected mind will help help us out here. How am I supposed to be calm about this, Dean Swan? Dean Swan, what's happening to us? I don't know. This is highly unusual. Let's call it a day. The two of you should go to the medical wing. They might know more. I'll try to do some research between meetings. We're just supposed to be okay walking around campus like a couple of tuneless kids. In the meanwhile, are you kidding me? He glares at Dean Swan for a second before turning and storming out of the sunnet room. Ace appears nuzzling against you in worry. Yeah, he's scared. So am I. Go after him, Anthony. He needs you right now. Dean Swan places a hand on your shoulder for a moment. She nods and you run after Atlas, chasing him to the center of campus. Atlas, hold up. The same thing happened to me. Let's talk let's talk about it. And I don't I don't know if figure out what we should do. He whirls around to face you, but instead of anger you see fear in his eyes. You don't understand. When I was on the run, my magic was the only thing keeping me safe. I need it. How am I supposed to start my classes tomorrow when I, when the one thing I have going for me isn't even going for me? I mean, for me anymore. Flames shoot out of his body, hitting bushes and scorching the grass. He curses and puts them in and out with a snap of his fingers. Your magic's back. You raise a hand and focus focus on your sun magic. And so is mine. Whatever that was, it's over. It was a blimp, a blip, like what happened to me during the winter, winter solstice last year. Atlas crosses his arms, jaw tense. So you're worried about your classes starting? You have, you have your first class with me. I'll be there with you. Just forget about it. Ace headbutts Atlas gently in the thigh, and he places a hand on his head. Atlas, about school. What are you so afraid of? I'm just so used to having no friends. It was the right thing to do, and it helped me survive. But will those same tactics benefit me at Pentercast? I don't think so, and I'm too old to change. To figure out how to be around people. Atlas, you're 19. You're not ancient. Yeah, 19 years without a sleepover. And now I have a roommate I barely know how to talk to. I don't know much about teamwork. Ace believes in you, and so do I. We're going to handle tomorrow together. We're a, un we're a unit, twin of mine. Atlas lets out a sigh. Let me guess, you've already done Kanto supply shopping. Uh, come again? Atlas takes a piece of paper out of his pocket and shows it to you, eyebrows raised. Is that what that piece of paper was? I thought it was an old assignment from last year and threw it out. Oh, this is, oh, this is so good. I can't believe I'm already more on top of this school thing than you are. Might I point out that neither of us done, done our shopping yet? That's so we're both the problem student. Well, Penn Square is a portal right away. We might as well get this over with. My God. Do you want to hang out with me? 
Do you? Do you? Actually, it's Ace. I want to hang out with Ace. But I guess I'll, I'd be down to tag with you tagging along too. I think this will help help me feel better without about well everything. I'll let you handle it. You seem like you just need to... Sorry about that, people. You need to think things through alone, and I don't want to get in the way. But I thought you wanted to... Never mind. That's probably a good idea. Errands take longer the more people you take. And you'll probably be allowed me loud and stuff. You notice he looks a little disappointed and sp speak up as he starts to turn away. You can take Ace with you though. I'm sure he'll like the outing. Alice nods his thanks as Ace bounces around enthusiastically. The two of them head to paint square without you. You're taking a walk around campus a few days later when you spot Griffin coming out of the thief arena. You wave and head over to him. Hey Griffin, were you getting in some extra practice or... Oh hi Anthony, Caps had some news for me. Turns out he's going to be training me to take over as captain next year. No way, you must be exci so excited. It's everything I could have wished for I guess. That sounds less than enthusiastic. Is is something wrong? I'd be lying if I said it was totally unexpected. I know I've been playing well the last two years, and it's an honor. Cap saw that, but I just applied for the Fortuna Revelry Scholarship, and that's a big commitment, as big as a training to be team captain. I don't want to let Cap or the other new team down. But whatever I decide now affects the next year, too. No pressure, am I right? You have to, you have time to make your decision. The captain sprung this on you right after you applied for your scholarship. That's a lot to handle at, all at once. You, t you tell me about it. I feel like I'm trying to figure out my game plan for this year and next year. You don't want to rush a decision like that. Just give yourself some time to figure out what's best for you. Griffin sighs, then runs a hand down his face. Thanks for looking out for me, Anthony. But I just need to get used to the whole th idea of being captain, and that's why captain's training me. Cap's training me. Anyway, I don't want to worry about it about all of that right now. I'm about to head head off for some field work. All right, that's great. What are you doing? An earthquake hit it off the off the coast of an island in the Pacific. A tsunami's on the way, and me and my cohort are going to fortify the beach. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. It is, but I'm working with the best Pendergast has to offer. It'll be an experience, an incredible learning experience, and great magic practicing. This is now. This is something you seem excited about. It's practically radiating off you. Natural disaster relief, relief is doing, and it's meaningful. There's nothing like going to these places, is in facing down Mother Nature. You can help. You can come help if you like. We're always helping to have more hands on deck. Do you think I'd really be helpful? No doubt about it. Plus, once we do our job, uh, there'll be time for more, for a little fun in the surf and sun. What do you say? I don't want to impose. I'm not sure if I'm ready to face the, down the actual tsunami, but I know you have it in you. Go save the day and have fun. You deserve it. Thanks, Anthony. Catch you later. 
You wave as Griffin jogs off. <sighs> On the way back to your dorm later that night, you notice Atlas heading swiftly down the hall, keeping his head low. That's weird. You try to catch up to him, following him to Dean Swan's office. He presses his ear to the door, then steps back and mutters a spell. He's breaking into Swan's office. You really fall behind as Atlas slips inside and shuts the door behind him. You press your ear to the door like he did and hear nothing until... <laughs> Something metallic clatters to the floor inside. You burst open... In the office, heart pounding. Atlas, what are you? You're just in time to see Atlas disappear into the mirror beside Dean Swan's desk. I don't know what you're hiding, Atlas, but I'm going to find out. What's he up to? Well, we'll figure it out next week. Hopefully, we find out who that girl is. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. And if you want to get notified of all the videos I put, I put up on my channel, go hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video.